Welcome back to my kitchen. Today it's all about corn and it's really all about esquites, that really famous street snack that you find all over Mexico. A little hard to categorize in the American kitchen because it is a brothy corn thing, although I am going to show you an alternative that is esquites fritos. But usually when you see it, it's just a brothy corn dish that is garnished with mayonnaise and cheese and not melting cheese, but garnishing cheese and some lime juice and some chili. I mean, it is so delicious. But the first thing that we have to talk about is the corn. And when you can find great corn, farmer's market say, that's when you really want to make esquites. But when you make it, it will not taste like the esquites in Mexico because in the United States, all of our corn that we would find in a farmer's market would be what we call vegetable corn or it's sweet corn. And in Mexico, that is not the corn that they use. They use this, what they would call milk stage field corn. So it's grain corn, like what you would make the tortilla dough out of or cornmeal out of. But instead of letting it get fully ripened and start to dry, they pick it early when you put a thumbnail in in the one of the kernels and it will squish out a little milky substance that's what they call milk stage uh, field corn it's chewy it's got so much to offer but it's not sweet at all. So just know that even though I'm going to show you how to make really great esquites today, they're going to taste a little different than what you would have in Mexico. So the first thing that you got to do is to cut the corn off of the cob. And um, there's many different ways that you could do this. Uh, my standard way right now, and I've gone through many different phases of this, is simply to cut it off the cob straight down like this. Everybody that's watching this, will have their own favorite way of doing it. Um, this is another setup that we use a lot at work um, where you would just put the corn cob like this and start cutting down and let the kernels fall down around this small upended bowl that's here. Personally, I'm finding right now that just simply holding the cob and cutting one side off like that allows me then to flip it over and to be flat and more stable for the other three sides. So you just have to kind of know where the cob is so that you're not cutting off a lot of cob into the corn kernels as they come off of here. Okay, so now we've got all of the kernels cut off of six ears of corn. Some people like to go around and scrape everything with the back of a spoon. Feel free to do that. It will give more flavor to the finished dish. But if you're working kind of quickly through this, cutting the kernels off the cob just like that is fine. Now I have water here coming to a simmer. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is to make a corn broth. Some of these are not fitting in here very well. So I'm just going to cut the end of these things off because they're a little bit too big for, for this, this pan here. So slide them all in there. Now what you want to make sure of is that the corn kernel, I mean the corn cobs are fully submerged into the water and that they're covered by the water. Um, I'm going to say almost like two inches of water above it. These are kind of floating around, but you can see that they're nicely submerged into this. Now I'm going to throw these pieces in there because they'll get flavor too. Put the top over it, um, a partially cover, a medium to medium low once it comes to a full boil. And we're going to let that simmer for about an hour to bring a lot of that corn flavor out of the cup. Then we'll come back and we'll finish it. It's a very easy recipe to do, but when this is ready, I'll show you what it's like to finish it. Okay, I think that this is ready now. There's not much of a way to tell whether it's ready or not, but give it about that hour time to be able to uh, to get the flavor from the cob out of there. Um, if I try to pour this, it's going to be horrible. So I'm just going to take these guys and set them right here in this strainer and then kind of pour over them uh, just because we have to strain 
this liquid now. Okay, all that is in there. Now I'm going to get rid of these corn cobs now because they have done all that they can do for us. I'll set them over here and I'm going to scrape the fresh corn into this pot here. And with this corn cob broth, I'm going to cover them by about an inch. Um, that will be our flavorful liquid. Now, I will tell you, if you don't have time to make this corn cob broth, you can do this whole thing just simply with water. It will taste good. It won't be quite as rich. So I always encourage everybody to make the corn cob broth if you do have time. So about an inch over the level of the corn, which is what I have right now. I think, yes, I think that's about... Yeah, that's about it. Second ingredient that's going to go in there besides the corn kernels is fresh epazote. Okay, so I know a lot of you will say, but I can't find fresh epazote. Number one, go to your Mexican grocery store because there's a really good chance that they have it. No, they won't have it at most well-stocked grocery stores, but the Mexican grocery stores will have it. And um, this is really beautiful stuff. I'm just gonna pull off a whole handful of it Never used episote before? Let me tell you what it's like, okay? It's a pungent herb, but once you taste it with the corn or with black beans, because it's oftentimes simmered with black beans, you will find that it is a flavor that just gets in your head and nothing is quite like it. Of course, you could put a big handful of cilantro in here, but once you have simmered it for a long time, it won't taste like your fresh cilantro. It'll be good but it won't be the same. Okay, so I'm just gonna throw the, those in there, put the top back on here. I still have it over the fire. I'm gonna bring it back to a boil and then regulate the heat so that the liquid in there is just barely simmering and we're gonna let that go for about 20 minutes. And then we're basically ready to season and serve. Now, if you're doing this in Mexico, let me tell you that the corn there will probably need about double the amount of time in cooking to get tender. That stuff is, uh, well, let's say more substantial than what we have in the States. Now, back to the recipe. Okay, time is up. Uh, this needs to be seasoned. It usually takes about two teaspoons of salt uh, for this, so I'm gonna just start with that and then give it a little taste here. I'm gonna stir it all up to make sure that that salt is evenly distributed through there. And see where we are flavor-wise. It just makes you happy. It's such a, a beautiful flavor. I think we're right on the salt there. Now, if you want to be very traditional, um, like you would find it in the street vendors stalls in Mexico, they would always do it like in a to-go cup like that. So you could serve that, especially if you're going to do an outdoor party or something and you want to serve this. Or you might want to go to working with a mug like I am here. But you want to make sure that you have enough of the broth um, to really cover all of this. Got a little bit of the, the corn stuff there. The silk was in there. So first thing for the garnishes that I like to put in there is the lime. So I'm gonna squeeze in a nice amount of lime. Of course, this is all to suit your own taste. Mayo is the next thing. Go to the Mexican grocery store if you want to be a traditionalist like I am, and you will buy the mayonnaise that, has, that is flavored with lime. It's really the best thing for this. Same thing if you're making Mexican street corn. Uh, you may fall in love with this stuff so much that you want to have this as the mayonnaise in your house. So I put a spoonful of that in there, again, to suit your own taste. This is Mexican queso fresco. 
Um, I will tell you that if you don't have Mexican queso fresco on hand um, or can't find it easily, uh, goat cheese crumbles or feta crumbles can be really good. They're stronger than Mexican queso fresco, but they can be really nice. Um, and then a little bit of the spicy crushed chili. This is uh, de arbol. Um, and then I'm just going to stir the whole thing together. Now at this point you really have to stir it because you're going to make that broth creamy by actually stirring in the mayonnaise that you put in there. And then you want to give it a little taste here. Mm. I think it could use just a little bit more chili. So I'm going to put that in there. You might want to grab for another lime to put it in, but I will tell you, this can be a very, very satisfying addition to an outdoor taco party. Look. Mm. If you happen to be in Mexico City, there is a really good chance that you will find some of the street vendors that are making the esquites fritos. So let me talk you through how to do that. The first thing that I do is to melt some fresh rendered pork lard in a skillet. Now, if you're not a pork lard person, you could do this in butter, but I will tell you the traditional flavors with the pork lard. Then add the kernels of corn that you've cut off the cob and chop up a white onion and, or a smallish white onion and add that to the pan. And then just turn and turn and turn until you start to see a little browning. Of course, the seasonings that are gonna go in here is gonna be a handful of epazote leaves. Just tear them off the bunch and chop them up. And then add those to the skillet along with uh, a small handful of little arbol chilies, take the tops off of them first, and just keep stirring that until you get this really beautiful browning. At that point, you need to season it. It'll take a couple of teaspoons of salt. Stir that all up and then spoon it into a small bowl. Squeeze on some lime, put a dollop of mayo on the top of it, a nice sprinkling of queso fresco or one of its stand-ins, and then another sprinkling of chili because the ones that are in the pan won't have given it that much heat. All you have to do is stir all of that together and you are in for a real treat. <laughs> 